Welcome to The Real Build. I am your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I have a special guest coming from Largo, Florida. She is an allied ASID member, a tenured, a tenured NYC interior design and certified feng shui practitioner practicing in Tampa, in the Tampa Bay area. She has been practicing design for celebrities, high profile clients, and people all over the world for over 17 years. She loves to create beautiful environments that ensure prosperity, happiness, and harmony. Th through her superior knowledge and experience, she can help you with interior design, remodeling, feng shui, window treatments, bathroom design, project management, space planning, decorating, staging, organizing, solutions. And Rania, it's an honor to have you. Welcome to The Real Build. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great. Thank you so much. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the intros always are. The intros always are. So I meant to ask you too. So just so my guests know, you pronounce your name, your name, Rania. How, how about your last name? Just so my guests can find you. Yakub. 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 Okay, perfect. So I like to get started with asking about your background. So let's talk about who is Rania Yakub. Um, so, uh, as you mentioned, I've been practicing design for over 17 years, probably close to 18 now. Um, I'm originally from New York, born and raised. I worked in uh, um, the design district uh, in Manhattan in New York City uh, for 10 years. Uh, I, I went to Hofstra University, actually, my undergrad. I have a, a business degree in marketing. And then I worked in a Fortune 500 company, and I said to myself, this is not for me. I need to bust out of the cube over here. So I went back to school for uh, interior design. I went to a couple of different schools, the Metropolitan Institute of Interior Design, and then I ended up at Pratt in uh, Brooklyn. And then, um, and I've been working ever since. It's the only, it's really basically just for, except for that first year, uh, it's really the only thing I've ever done in my adult life, uh, interior design and decorating. And I was so thankful for my experience in New York City with all, um, just being in the heart of it all. And then we moved here to Florida, uh, my husband and I, about 10 years ago. And I have four kids. And believe it or not. And in between these kids, I worked part time here and there. I always kept my, my hands in it, helping out friends and just taking on small jobs. And about three and a half uh, years ago, I launched my own business designed by Rania. Um, also, I don't know why I was so crazy, but in the middle of all these babies and kids, I went back to school and <laughs> I decided to become certified in feng shui. So I practice also uh, Western feng shui in relation just to interior design. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and that's a good thing too, to be busy. And, I, and I, I'm honored to have you on too, because like we talked about before the show, I love having interior designers on because you guys are so important to uh, just the process, not only in just people buying a home and trying to change what the insides are, but also new construction, which I do, uh, having a designer uh, along with the team is so critical. And I preach that, especially in custom home building. You know, I've been, I've been dealing with a lot of bigger custom homes and having a design firm working with us too. It just brings everybody together and makes the process so much easier and I preach that to customers too because not a lot of them know it you know and we're going to get right. more into that too because they think you know it's going to cost me more money and this and that yeah. and so which we'll definitely get into so I'm happy to have you on and Thanks. and just I mean you said you got certified in feng shui so just just what is what do you mean by feng shui for the people that out there that don't really know so right so um i went to school actually online for a year before this whole distant learning actually like became popular these days uh to I, I attended the Western School of Feng Shui in San Diego. And basically what I learned is, uh, I mean, I was always doing it intuitively um, where I would walk into a space and I was just very sensitive to 
the color, the, um, the colors going on, the scale of furniture, just, you know, how I felt when I walked into a, a room or a house or, you know, um, any sort of space. And, you know, so feng shui is just, um, it's the science behind how certain spaces make you feel. Like, it, um, so it's the psychology behind colors, um, you know, certain colors make you feel a certain way. They use that even in marketing, like, you know, for food, you rarely you'll see like food with like a blue label on it because blue is not an appetizing color. You'll see more like, you know, colors relating to uh, nature. Um, so basically, ha you know, learning about the psychology of colors, um, the arrangement of furniture, you know, making sure everything has a nice flow to it that that you, you know, it is a lot about safety too, you know, with um, not pointing like sharp edges of tables outwards and, you know, having four feet of, you know, just like kind of basic stuff, like four feet of walking space between furniture, not walking into the back of a sofa, just feeling invited when you walk into a space. Um, and then it's also uh, no decluttering. I actually have somebody decluttering right now, my garage. So um, that's like feng shui 101. Um, and, uh, using a lot of natural elements in a room. So people think like feng shui has to do with Asian design. It really doesn't. It just, the philosophy originated in Asia a very long time ago, but, um, it's just, you know, you feel better when you have natural elements in the room so um yeah so i just did so now i just i practice i that you know um with my in relation to my uh, interior design or people will just hire me just for feng shui consulting and then it's just a bonus that i do interior design as well so yeah. that's it in a nutshell i mean which is awesome too because they both tie together i mean big time right. as far as far as you being a designer then being able to organize do feng shui because it just it it levels you up in what you do which is which is awesome it gives you it makes you a step higher than those other designers that are out there because you know you yeah. you learn this stuff too right you know so I don't just pick, you know, things in the, to go in a space that are pretty. They have to really make sense um, and not be like too much of one thing. Like you don't want too much wood in a room or too much metal in a room and, you know, uh, or too much white in a room. I mean, all, too much of anything um, doesn't make you feel good. So, mm, yeah, which it is, all has yeah. purpose. Yeah, you can overkill a room real quick and then yeah. it feels crowded and so on yeah. too. So I completely understand. So yeah. why, I want to ask you why interior design out of everything that you could have done throughout life? Why did you choose yeah. interior design? Well, I knew very early on I could never touch guts or, and, you know, because I'd be in <laughs> healthcare. So that was out. Um, and I just always knew that I wanted to do something creative. So it kind of started out as a hobby. And then I took a couple of courses and I decided I really, really liked it. And, um, and I was, I don't know, I, I was always good at it at, from very early, even from when I was a teenager. So, um, people would always ask me for advice and then I just went to school for it and I loved it. And then when I did it professionally in New York, it was just really fun. Um, and, uh, I got to travel a lot and just, you know, just soak up, um, soak up all this, you know, um, education and an experience. And it was awesome. And just, and it's something that's always changing. So each project, you know, even though there's trends, but there's so many styles, each project is new. I love meeting people. Um, and just, it's my way of helping people. So that's why. Yeah, which is, I mean, and if you, if you don't want to help people, you shouldn't be in that business because I mean, you're, <laughs> cause you're constantly around people, but yeah, right. most, I mean, most designers I've talked to, they started doing it from a, a young age and, and they mm -hmm. loved it and it kind of carried on. They learned the business more and so on. It's, it's a tough mm -hmm. business just to be able to say at a certain age that, you know what, I, I want to be an interior designer. You kind of have to have that you know, that, that touch of a designer too, because not everybody can do it. And that's why I give you guys so much credit because it is a lot to handle and not a lot of people understand 
how much you guys have to handle and take on and deal with changes with customers and the customer, you know, you pick cabinets, but the price was too high. So you got to go back and match a cabinet because, you know, it's just. There are so many factors. Oh my gosh. And then with building a home, you know, I can be involved with the beginning stages, like, you know, picking out everything um, that's more permanent, like tile countertops, all that stuff. But I'm still there when the home is, built because then we're in like phase i don't know what you want to call it if you really want phase two like 52 but i'm there picking out the furniture and the window treatments down to like the towels and the bedding and the decorative items so it's a very long-term relationship that i have with my clients you know Mm -hmm. so it's a lot you're right it is a lot but you know i i'm a good listener and i'm good at guiding the client and we have we have a lot of like photos and inspiration pictures and we you know we're usually on the right track from the beginning mm-hmm. yeah it is a it's a it definitely is a lot and that's i like i i always say to, to any designer i have a lot of respect for you guys because it is a lot of change it is a lot of back and forth to make it right but fit within a budget and so on too and that's what I kind of wanted to get into with you because there's a lot of people you know I'll bring up you guys should maybe consider hiring a designer it'll make the process a lot easier with us you know because that's what you guys do you streamline the process for us as the builder uh, to where you say okay they selected this this and this and that takes a weight off our back and all we have to worry about is doing the project and right. making sure the project comes out good. But a lot of people have that fear of, well, I don't know if I want to pay or a designer, ha- you know, they don't, they have an open pocketbook, so they're just going to spend my money or, you know, how do you get past that kind of stuff? Cause you, you've said that designers save you money by helping you avoid making costly mistakes. So how are you doing these things? Yeah, for sure. I mean, honestly, I don't like saying this, but it's really the truth. I'm I'm not I'm really like one of the least expo- least expensive components of the whole entire project. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not trying to cheapen myself in any way, shape or form, but it's a small investment that you pay in the beginning to get an expert idea, so, um, an expert opinion so that you don't make any costly mistakes. You're spending at average price 50, 60 grand you know, for a kitchen, you want to make sure that, you know, you're picking the right things and, you know, a kitchen, you don't change it that often. I'm just using a kitchen, for example. I mean, these are very expensive ticket items. You want to make sure that you make the right choice. And, or let's say, for example, you buy the wrong sofa and you have it custom made and you never, and you don't have access to swatches. You don't have, you know, access to uh, trade discounts and it's final sale. You buy the sofa, it doesn't fit. So if they even l- allow you to return it, which they probably won't, if they do, you have to pay a 15 to 20% restocking fee. It's not easy to ship at, back a sofa. Mm-hmm. I mean, these are these are mistakes that people go through and that can be avoided if they hired a designer. Also, you see a lot of people when they pick one that they want to pick paint colors, they put like 20, 30 swatches on the wall. <laughs> that just confuses the situation. And honestly, they all start blending at the end. They all look the same. <laughs> it's, it's not a fun process. They become overwhelmed and then they're just like, screw it. Let's just pick anything at the end. You know what I mean? So, you know, I do color consultations. It's very easy for me to even just do, believe it or not, maybe just because I'm from New York, I work fast, or maybe I've been doing this for a while. I can do a 5,000 square foot home color consultation in like an hour and a half. It's just something that just comes naturally to me. It's not only saving time, money, it's saving time mm-hmm. as well. So these are... Um, and then at the end, you you can tell when somebody you had help with something rather than if you did it yourself. That's just another point. People oh, yeah. think they can do it themselves, but it doesn't turn out as good. No, it's... like your taxes, <laughs> like your taxes, right? You would hire an accountant. So. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it is true because a lot of people do go into it and they go, I you know I can design, or my wife does design. You know, she's designed stuff in the past, but when you're dealing with you know, even smaller homes too, but larger scale homes. I mean, there's so many rooms, so many different things that you have to tie together, pull together. You know, the wall color has to match the rug and then the desk color has everything as a piece to that puzzle. And then having you there is what kind of helps with this 
process and streamlines it. And that's where I wanted to get into too, is saving time. Cause you just said that time is so important. Everybody, you know, we have, we have limited time throughout our days and that's where you kind of streamline that process. So, you know, let's talk about how hiring a professional can actually help the actual process. Let's get into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So usually, uh, well, if they're smart, they hire a designer from the very beginning mm -hmm. and they don't even enter that warp zone where they're stuck. Right. And so just like you mentioned before, you know, it, uh, I mean, I make the process really fun and um, excited you know, and they get excited over what they're picking and, you know, it's, it's a fun process and, you know, I'm able to, um, let's say we're picking out tile, I can take the tile and, you know, kind of Photoshop it in and, you know, kind of put, make like a makeshift room so they can visualize what it's going to look like. Um, uh, you know, we have, we share inspiration pictures and a mood board from the very beginning so that we have a direction and where we're going. I also have a project manager um, who's like my right hand who, so I can focus on design. She'll have all the files and the orders all organized and with Excel spreadsheets, everything that kind of designers are not that side of their brain that they're not good at. I have somebody doing that for me. So she keeps everything organized. Any question, you know, she's the liaison between all the vendors. So that's something if a homeowner were to do that, they'd be doing all that on their own just from the very beginning. Um, you know, and then, like I mentioned before, I have designer discounts that aren't um, available to the general public that I pass on to um the homeowners and you know, and you know they appreciate that because it's expensive when you when you build a new home or you renovate um and then you know so we get through all that and then it comes time you know it's just a lot of time researching and going around to showrooms or on the internet i mean all the resources and i mean i i have con i have connections and um relationships with all these uh, vendors, I've already had, I had established accounts with them for years and years. So I, I mean, they know me by name and I have my personal contact over there and they take care of me. So it literally saves hours. I mean, lots and lots of time when you hire a designer. So, you know, when somebody says, Hey, do you know where I can get that? Instead of them searching for hours, I know where they can get that. And I know where they can get it for the best price too. So yeah, and it's like you just brushed on right there. I mean, uh, the designers I've worked with have even saved costs on the furnishings too, which is yeah. huge, you know, because you get them at a different price. Uh, a prime mm -hmm. example is me. I didn't even think about it. I should have went through the designer that we use, but I bought a bedroom set from Barry's Furniture. Well, then I realized <laughs> it was in one of our model homes and I'm like, wonder what we paid for through the designer <laughs> you know and it was actually better not to know yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i mean you guys help with that cost aspect too of things because i mean you probably get a direct versus going through one of these furniture stores that's going to have their markup right so, like you know. macy marks up their stuff and i love their th their items but you can get them anywhere else but they mark it up like seven times mm -hmm. so that's just that's a normal you know markup for a retail uh, mm -hmm. big name a big box retail store so yeah yeah exactly so and here's another question you said that you have said that uh designers can help give the wow factor you've been been you've been looking for uh they are trained to think differently uh spatially and to see an overall picture that clients often cannot thinking outside of the box is what designers do all day long so how are you doing this let's let's interpret this a little bit so i'm a part of a lot of different organizations one is nari um the, you know the national association of remodeling industry also asid as you mentioned i'm also a part of tbba and you know um and then i'm also part of the international feng shui guild so for off the bat um you know, not including the smaller ones that I belong to, but these are national organizations. Um, and, you know, as well as I know that in order to stay and uh, maintain status in these um, organizations, you have to have continuing education. So, um, you know, I'm constantly edu 
educating myself, taking courses. Um, you know, I know what I'm always getting um, up to date um, articles and magazines of what the latest trends are, what, you know, um, and also I have, and I have a lot of connections um, and like locally as well that, um, you know, keep me up to date on what the latest uh, trends are. Like, for example, like AV, like smart homes and how that could work with window treatments and stuff like that. So, um, but the wow factor, you know, just by just being able to like, you know, take a room and, you know, come up with ideas that somebody else doesn't necessarily have all, all that knowledge in. And so there are, when I walk into a space, um, and I don't do free consultations, but this is what I tell my clients when I walk into a space, I can visualize exactly what needs to happen in that room. And then I kind of like push the limits. Like, are you okay with a tile that's kind of like 3D and like popping off of the wall? Maybe they, maybe they didn't even know that existed. Um, uh, I mean, there are wallpapers that literally look like cement, gold leaf, leather, grass cloth. Um, like sparkles. I mean, these are things that I'm constantly like, my brain is into, you know, taking in and I have libraries of these things at my house. Um, and, and, you know, furniture for it to be, I have a lot of people that can make furniture for me in the budget that um, they're looking for. So um, I had a project last year, it was a, a disaster um, company where they take uh, um, where they, you know, they renovate uh, spaces that um, have had hurricanes. So um, we made a table that kind of looked like, oh, it literally had blue epoxy, like, like running through the top of the table and coming down like in a waterfall That's edge cool. in the middle of it, which was so cool. And it kind of tied into their story because they deal with hurricanes and flooding and, you know, it, it all, you know, it all tied in together. So these are things that, you know, they never, I opened their eyes to things that they never knew existed or could happen. And you know, that it was custom made for them. It's one of a kind. So these are just some examples off the top of my head, but um, that I definitely go for the wow factor. Too many wow factors in a room is not good, but one wow factor is good. So. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want too much, but that definitely is almost like a trademark to you too. But I mean, what you said also, uh, you studying up on everything and the trends and getting the magazines and doing the continuing education, that's what makes you stand out above all the rest of the designers too, you know, because doing that extra work and putting that in and actually knowing trends, but also being able to go into a room and just visualize it, that's what's very impressive too. You know, you don't have to come in and lug in a bunch of stuff and say, how's this look? Maybe we'll do this, that, or this. You just yeah. say, how about we start here and do this? This is my vision. And that's yeah. impressive. For sure. I'm not, I'm definitely not just an order taker and I just want the thing to be done. I, you know, there's definitely a starting point, whether it's a rug and we pull out all the colors from there and build it and build it and build it. And, but I don't miss a detail, mm -hmm. you know? Which is so important too, which makes you stand out because details are what it's all about too, and especially in custom homes and so on. But let's talk, let's talk some design trends. Uh, and I'm sure you get asked this question a lot, but what are the current trends and where do you see them going in the future? Whether it's in a kitchen, bath, family rooms, uh, you know, are we getting into more staying with the open spaces? Are we going more divided now that everybody's stuck, it was stuck at home and want to be away from each other <laughs> How, where are we going yeah. with, as far as trends <laughs> so you know um being here in florida a lot of people especially being by the water a lot of people ask for a coastal uh feel and i definitely think maybe last year in the last like you know last three years people were into everybody wanted gray 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 mm -hmm. gray left and right gray now I have to say something about gray. Gray is the most depressing color in the whole entire spectrum. If you think about gray, you think like Portland, Oregon. And honestly, if you if people have been painting their whole houses gray, I don't know if you did, but uh, no <laughs> offense if you did, but uh, they've been really feeling kind of depressed in it. And they, and they can't live in it for too long. And it's not a good color for the bedroom. 
and you know where you're supposed to like have love and you know have nice feelings it becomes a very depressing color so gray i feel like last year was phasing out like you know mm. it started phasing out and a lot more color has been coming in i think softer colors um have been trending like more pastels believe it or not um gold is kind of my signature like whether you want to call it matte gold or um brass or satin brass or whatever but some sort of gold has been trending and i kind of like to put splashes of that um i did a lot of projects last year where i kind of coined the the term coastal chic because i do like to put gold and bling you know if if i can so um i did a lot of like coastal um homes where we did uh, navel was the kind of color of the year last year where we did some navel white some like Carrera marble and like splashes of, of gold and, you know, a lot of t textures and layering. It was, uh, they turned out really, really like really elegant, really beautiful and, and just happy. Um, and so what else? Yeah. Open spaces are still definitely in, but w last year we also started seeing a little bit of like a divide, but not like a full wall, but maybe a, a sort of decorative wall where you could kind of like have a little bit of a personal space, but it's not fully like covered, whether it was slatted or some decorative metal divider uh, and not a full, uh, not a full uh, partition, but maybe just like a hint, like five feet of, of mm -hmm. this like kind of cool divide um, between spaces, but definitely open plan is um, still um, trending and um, yeah, that's it. Really. What about so, kitchens, uh, bathroom design? What are you seeing there? Uh, really? I think, I think last year um, also started with the really cool lighting. Um, lighting design has just been my fave in the last like year and this year as well. Um, just really cool pendant lights. Um, mm -hmm. You know, L LED lights I've been specking out for years. Um, also quartz. I don't do, you know, anything other than quartz these days. And, um, and then, you know, everybody wants to do the white shaker or whatever. But, you know, I like to kind of mix up the, you know, the island with the cabinets, even just do a two-tone bottom color and top color. Just, um, you know, very light and, and like, airy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's what I've been seeing. And then really cool bar stools as well, but comfortable ones, but really cool, cool with the leg shape. Um, a lot of gold. I've been seeing it. I don't know about you. I've been seeing a lot of gold and that makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, we just did our uh, model home and the pendant. We did a really cool, or the designer did, she did a really cool gold pendant. It was a single yeah. pendant. Yeah, it was like a Ralph Lauren pendant. And then she did right. the same one over uh, the dinette area as well. But the cabinets were a mix of walnut and then uh, right. just a regular gloss flat panel on the other back end too yeah so she had they did walnut on the actual island then a glossy flat panel on the back and then mm -hmm. brought in that walnut up the other side of the kitchen as well so and then you yeah. had that two-tier upper cabinet as well too so was, yeah we are also seeing a lot of matte black um in appliances and in plumbing as well so that looks really sharp mm -hmm. the matte black. Um, you know i've I've seen refrigerators in the matte black or, you know, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool trend that which, came out. Like. Which makes sense because the stainless is kind of a pain that you know what I with know. cleaning and <laughs> so. Yeah. And it's funny because this all, tra it travels throughout everything, whether it's the home design, fashion, cars, cars were like coming out with matte black with like some shiny black, like, you know, details running through it. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it's the same across everything yeah. yeah and it's always changing <laughs> as you know more mm -hmm. than anybody so um what are what are some little things that you know we can do to add character to a room and make an old boring room into like a focal point of the home you know and especially with people being at home right now or what are some little things somebody can do to make make a big change well i did post a blog on my website um uh of like how to style a bookshelf mm -hmm. so you know that could look really 
um, cluttered if you don't do it the right way. And there is kind of like a formula that's, uh, you know, appealing to the eye. Um, with, you know, some books sideways, some vertical, a focal, like maybe a, a sculpture in the middle, some pictures. And there's, there is like kind of like a pattern that you want your eye to kind of go up and down. So that, you know, with kids staying home and their, all their stuff and books, that could be something where you can, um, uh, you know, make a room kind of look cool. And also people have been also working from home as well to set how to set up your home office. That might be part of your home office. Mm -hmm. um, so um, also I, I have a little video that um, I have a YouTube ch channel that I'm starting and I did a little video on how to set up a console and you want your eye to kind of like glide over it. And you like, and I like to play with different heights um, of, you know, whatever's going on it, but I also like to balance and, you know, have symmetry so that, you know, you have a focal point and then you kind of work your way outwards. So that's like a trick that I like to do when I set up a console and what I'm thinking um, about when I put decorative items. I don't really like to just put ch like tchotchkes, but, um, you know, when I do set, set them up, that's, that's kind of something that I, I like to do and I'll, I can share that with you. Um, yeah. What's the YouTube channel so people know? Oh, it's um, Design Tips by Rania. Okay. So per I, can, I can share with you the link when okay. I post it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And, and, and going into that too a little bit more, what about people that are trying to save money? What's some cost-effective strategies somebody can do to kind of change their house or their rooms or make, make it a little bit more modern or upscale mm -hmm. um so i like believe it or not like some of these websites like overstock or um wayfair sometimes they have gotten a bad rep but i like to if if somebody says to me i'm on a budget and i need something fast i like to start off online at, at these websites because um i like to do research on them and if i can find something that has like five stars or four and a half stars and has like 500 reviews, you know, not like three people like commenting on it. Um, that's a good place to start when, if you're decorating or doing something on, um, on a budget, they have a good return policy. I think within 30 days, if you don't like it, you just pay for it to be shipped back. So a lot of these um, websites like Wayfair, they'll have uh, things where um, they'll kind of like put, a room together and if you like it you could just click on it and you already know it costs it doesn't cost that much and they already kind of assembled things for you so you could just put it in your cart so that's I do use the internet a lot I do e-design I have clients all over you know the United States and um, that is a good resource to start when you're on a budget um, one of these budget websites they're they're really, they're pretty good I've had a lot of success with them for people on a budget and as as you know too, I'm sure paint changing the paint color in a room can go a long way as well too, or in the whole house. You know, I've seen yeah. some houses you walk in, it's bright yellow, or you're uh, just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yellow <laughs> can make you feel very sick if it's the wrong shade of ye uh, yellow, but it um, the yellow really like it can make you feel happy mm -hmm. or sick. Yeah. Um, it, doing an accent wall in a bedroom can change a room. Um, I mean, these are very uh, cost-effective things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, what else? You know, I mean, you could grab a bunch of uh, decorative, like, vases at, you know, different heights. They kind of come in a set that can add some color to a room without, you know, being so committed to repainting. So um, there's a lot of different things. Yeah, and I've, I've seen wallpapers obviously making a comeback too. I mean, some of it's not cost effective, but some probably can be as well. But I mean, I've seen that trends coming back. Let's uh, and uh, we just dealt with that. We actually finding a person that was that can do a good job at applying wallpaper <laughs> was a challenge where we were because it was kind of out for a little bit. Now it's coming back. Yeah. But we found somebody that did a really good job. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of a dying art for a while, but now it's coming back. Yesterday, I was wallpaper shopping for three hours with a client, <laughs> but we picked, we, we narrowed it down. So we, we picked them. They turned out really, really cool. 
Which, so. I mean, like you said, having that back wall, I mean, even in like a master bedroom out of that yes. or off a grass wall, wall. Paper, yeah, mm-hmm. makes a huge difference with the furniture mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. For sure. I love wallpaper. What? So let's talk about, you've you brushed on this with the golds and stuff like that. So what, what elements define your style and, and where do you find your inspiration as a designer? So, um, yeah, definitely uh, part of my signature style is adding a little bit of gold um, and a, a little bit of um, like it just adds a lot, a little bit of elegance when you add some gold, whether it's matte or if it's, if you're daring enough to do shiny, I do like to actually mix metals as well. Um, you know, like two metals, um, are fine. If we get into three, maybe they're not so close uh, together, but, the, um, I do, you know, I like to take risks like that as, and as long as it kind of translates into other things so like if i do a dark metal i want to make sure that maybe i do like dark legs on on a piece of furniture so it kind of doesn't come out of nowhere um i do i do definitely like i think you know i am an eclectic designer i think just by being from new york and just being uh, among so many different cultures um Mm -hmm. in new york city um, I'm Egyptian um, myself, so um, I've traveled a lot and seen a lot of different countries, and um, I definitely get my inspiration from traveling. Um, I like to mix, you know, old school, old traditional um, elements with modern elements. Uh, if somebody says they want like a clean design, my automatic go-to is a mid-century modern. Um, I think just the combination of my uh, uh, my experience and my education and traveling and just being up to date with everything. I just, I just bring, I bring it all to the table. So, um, uh, I, I do like to do like some statement pieces, whether it's an artwork or a wall, I won an award for a uh, commercial interior, um, decorating of a restaurant last year, um, called Trope on Central Avenue in St. Pete. And I brought in a Venetian plaster guy and he, re- he made this really cool wall out of copper. The whole wall was made out of copper. Um, and he won an award for that wall, but I tied that in with some, uh, really cool, a uh, geometric, uh, like, um, gold pendants some like hmm. uh, uh it uh, the copper on the wall he actually forced it to patina so it, he made it rust on the on the wall so there were some greens and then i mixed it with some green like lush velvet bar stools just like you know 20 of them going down a huge bar it just looked really sharp with some gold um legs and just uh, and just some muted very simple tables not to you know so because it was going up against the wall so um it, they were very simple. So I didn't, you know, again, I had to balance the, the room. Um, we had some metal tile on the ceiling. I thought that was, okay. that was really cool. And then I just finished it off with some custom artwork, very simple, abstract artwork. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think about the whole picture, how it all ties in together. And um, that was a really fun project. But I, I definitely think my projects are very different. They're mm-hmm. different for sure. Well, different's good, as you know, too. And most people that are in search for a designer want something different. Uh, you know, they don't want the same. And, and I'll go back to my example of that model home we just did. That was my key thing from the beginning is I didn't want to be like all the other builders. Plus here, obviously down here, it takes a little bit longer to build a home. So after a year and a half, two years of build, you know, the process and everything, you want that home to stand out later right. on and it needs to be timeless too and that's what I wanted and I just had somebody come in yesterday and they were like you know it's nice to not see seashells all over a wall and ship yeah. lap everywhere and I was like yeah the HGTV Chip and Joanne special right now that they're you know <laughs> that's all you see and and they right. start laughing they're like yeah this is great a beautiful house and I was like thank you you know because it take it, it that's what I wanted and and it is timeless and it will be a, a lot more timeless than the coastal ship lap everywhere because some of these houses are heavy heavy coastal you know and it's right. nice we're in a beachy area and we're in Florida and you get that vibe but you can do what you said too and twist that a little bit to make it a little bit more timeless coastal you know bring in the golds bring in some other stuff that's gonna pop right exactly coastal chic that's it yeah (laughs) yeah there you go there you go 
Um, another question: what What do you What do you find that is most challenging when designing a home? Um, you know, there are lead times that are out of my control, um, so that's some, that's sometimes that's difficult. Um, and, um, but you know, it is what it is when you have to, you know, propose the value of waiting for, for that special piece that you want, um, when it comes to, uh, you know, furniture and so on and so forth. Um, also I find that, you know, I tell people the options are, I mean, there is no, the options are, are, are limitless. There are no limits to all of the options that are out there. So usually, and I see, I've seen it time and time and time again, and I've been doing this for a long time. Usually the, the first one that we go with, the gut feeling is usually the right one. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we make, can we put together different, like, you know, um, I call them like families of like, you know, tile with fabric and curtains and, you know, rugs and furniture yeah we can make a million of those but that doesn't necessarily mean you know that the other the grass is greener on the other side you you know i think that um when people try to you know they they get overwhelmed or they get confused when they see these other combinations of things so um it's my job to just you know direct them and and make sure that they realize that you know what we picked is the right thing and um you know, not in a forceful manner, of course, but uh, I'm not pushy. Actually, my clients, you know, they say you're, you're really not pushy like the others, but, you know, I do make it fun. And, um, and so that's, that is, that can be challenging. Then you, you know, you know, it's like, I don't like to send my clients into these showrooms alone. I call that going into the wild. That's like, they're, they're going into the jungle. <laughs> So I like to be with them when, when, uh, when they go. And so, you know, for them to be overwhelmed and me kind of like bringing them back and, you know, just streamlining it, that, that could be a challenge. But um, it, as long as we start off on the right, on the right foot and, you know, we stay on the path, you know, we're good to go. So those are, those are two challenging things. Also, we aren't here. Uh, the Tampa Bay area has grown in the last decade since I've been here more and more showrooms and like design centers have been opening up. And then when I first moved here, there was nothing, but I know where you are in Naples, there, there are a lot of resources, mm -hmm. right? So um, that was a challenge a couple of years ago, but I think we're good now. We have a lot of um, support here and, and a lot of places to visit uh, in the last like five years, I would say. So. Which, yeah, which is good. But it's like you just said, too, there's always going to be because you have to literally hold their hand throughout the whole entire process. And it is a long process, especially when building wise as well. And I mean, even starting on a on a resale home that somebody bought, too. I mean, it's still you have to keep them on track all the time because they're going to okay. see there's so many choices out there yeah. like you said and they can there's all look so at that. beautiful choices i know mm -hmm. yeah and then they go in a showroom and they see the pretty light but they have a budget <laughs> and that pretty light's ten thousand dollars but their budget's so you know and it's just you have to be well how about we steer to this way and that's why i give you guys a lot of credit because <laughs> i mean being in custom homes too we understand you know, if we don't have a designer involved, we have somebody obviously in house that takes these people around. Well, it's not an easy thing because they're always, well, maybe I should go back to the tile place and look at something else, you know, or maybe I should go back to the faucet. And, and I was kind of liking that faucet, but maybe I should go. You guys are like, no, this ties with this. This ties with this. We right. need to work here, not in a forceful manner, but you know how to tell them this is yeah. what is going to work. Yeah, why we are picking this. I literally talked them through it. I just did it <clears throat> yesterday with a wonderful client of mine. Like like I said, three hours of wallpaper shopping and we narrowed it down to two. And we and so we I literally we went through each wallpaper. If there's no right or wrong, but if you go with this one, you're gonna get more of a muted look and then we can layer it. If you go with this, it's like bam, a statement piece. We don't have to do too much around it. And so we talk it through. We, there's a lot of talking and hand holding for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely, yeah. definitely. 
Um, so another question I wanted to ask, and, and I, I obviously went on your website too, and, and I know you got a blog on this, which can help people, but I wanted to talk about it as well. So with more people being home, obviously restrictions are starting to be lifted at this time as we speak, but there's still people at home that have had to stay home. They're, they're making their homes function as offices, uh, school rooms for their kids, uh, gyms, and in more places. So what can people do to make their homes more uh, a more efficient space? So I did do a, um, a, a Zoom training with, and about like 30 people um, came to them. And, and it was how to set up your home office the right way so that you could be the most productive. So as far as children go, I have four kids of my own. Um, it's important that if they're going to be doing any uh, schoolwork that they have a desk, it really is with a comfortable chair, just like, you know, you have one, I have one. Um, that's where they'll be able to be the most focused with a desk light. And, you know, if you have that luxury for them to each have their own individual desk so that they could just bang out the work and when they're done, they can come out of their room. And then the door doesn't necessarily need to be closed because, you know, me, I, I became a homeschool uh, teacher over the last quarter. So I had to kind of like sit in the hallway and kind of like maneuver my way between the kids, but they definitely need their own desk and, you know, to help them like, that have little compartments to put their stuff. And then us as adults, we also need a dedicated space to uh, work from home. If you can, a home, an actual dedicated office is ideal. If not, a guest room um, would be my second choice. Mm -hmm. um, if not, just a room with a door would be my third choice. If you don't have a room with a door, um, then uh, I would say the least used, the least traffic, you know, uh, uh, space in your home, like a dining room table, for example, a lot of people don't use the dining room table that often, as long as it's not in the center of your home, because then it's not fair really to the people. If you share your home with others, it's really not fair to them. You're doing a zoom and you're telling them like, don't come to the kitchen. I'm work, I, you know, uh, like don't walk in the background. Don't talk. I'm, I can't focus. I mean, it's just, it's not fair to you or, and to the other people. Also, it's like if, because a lot of people like to work at the kitchen table. It's not the best because food is there. You'll start eating more. It's not, <laughs> not, you know, you have to like, people might be cooking around you or whatever. It's just not the best. So somewhere just kind of far removed. Um, it's also important um, that if you're going to sit, that your back is like, uh, there is a wall behind you and that you could see like what's going on in front of you, that the action is not going on behind you because then you'll all constantly be distracted and like turning over, you know, uh, to see what's going on. That's called the power position. That's what we call that in feng shui. You want to be facing out like where the action is. So, um, and then there are a lot of different colors that help you focus and inspire. And I uh, think, and then there's, there are, you can even dive deeper in like how to set up your desk, where to put your phone, where to put your files. I mean, there, it is literally down to a science um, on how to be the most productive in your home. Um, and so, and that's it, you know, like a lot of natural light, keep the windows open, but you know, you also need some sort of shade. Maybe you don't, you don't want to glare on your computer. You need some sort of window treatment. Um, yeah, being home has been a change for a lot of people. Just getting outside as much as possible. If you feel like you, you can be productive sitting outside, maybe in mm -hmm. the shade, um, do that listen to the nature if you have a, a fountain in your pool or some sort of like water feature that's very nice that can help you relax but definitely a lot of walks um and getting out of the house for sure yeah you're probably <laughs> going to need those walks especially if you're being cooped up with kids and everything yeah. too you're going to need to get away somehow and, and i know you know, mm -hmm. most people used to be able to go to the office and everything, but now it's changed times. And I mean, it's just adjusting and everything too, obviously, you know, but more and more people as uh, are getting away from the office anyway, because they're not necessary for some businesses, which others right. there it is. So 
you know, having a good structured home office or designated space for yourself, whether you use a bedroom or you use, you know, something within your home where you can close yourself off from everybody's huge, you know, to get work done and so on. Because like you said, if you're in the middle of the room and you got kids running around, you're trying to do Zoom calls and then and then somebody's in the kitchen and this is happening and you're just... It can't. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> And people have gotten really frustrated. And, you know, I know it sounds simple what I'm saying, but some people don't think about it like that. They're like, I'm just going to plop over here. I'll sit in my bed. Oh, my gosh. If I sat in my bed and I did my work, I would definitely go to sleep. Yeah. There's no way. So I know it sounds tempting. Or I would turn on the TV, try to watch a movie or something. Like, you have to remove these temptations, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're really serious about uh, doing work. And a comfortable ergonomic chair is really important as well. Yeah, yeah, highly agree. Highly agree. So what what are you doing? And I, I like asking everybody this question because it's your your space is you got a lot of competition. My space, I do too. I mean, I'm, I'm a real estate broker as well. And as we know, there's a lot of real people in real estate in Florida, but same with interior design. There's a lot of people in that space. So what what are you doing to stand out from the rest of the designers in your area? What should people do to take notice of when choosing a designer? Definitely see if they are affiliated with reputable organizations. Um, There is also a difference between an interior designer and a decorator. Check their education, check their years of experience. Um, You know, a lot of people on these Facebook groups will ask, do you know an interior designer? And, you know, um, I think if you are present also like on social media and sharing your projects, sharing your ideas, connecting with your audience, that builds credibility as well. Um, You know, and just definitely, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. So uh, definitely check out um, the designers reviews and their projects and, um, you know, see if, see if that's a match for you. Um, sometimes a lot of interior decorating and design is something like sometimes people like you mentioned, oh, my wife does it or whatever. And they think that they can do it on their own, but they don't really know all the ins and outs. They don't have the relations with the, with the vendors. They don't have all these accounts. They haven't, you know, I'm in like three houses a day sometimes, sometimes. So, you know, it just, it's like, it's a second language. Somebody, actually asked me yesterday uh, it was a new client they wanted me to um they it was a husband and a wife the husband had one opinion the wife had the other opinion I, I didn't know them they were strangers so you know they said if we hire you we want you to give the honest opinion well they both, they both gave their opinion and I and I had to give my honest opinion so um you, you know just make sure that you click Mm-hmm. You know, you, you do a phone, you have a phone conversation with the designer first and before you bring them to your house, because um, a lot of times, like I said, these uh, designers, they, you can tell right away, they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they might be too pushy. They do the same thing over and over and over. Um, you know, sometimes the, there are designers where you hire them, you'll never see them again. You'll only talk to their assistant. I'm not like that. So, um, you know, my project manager supports me. I do the design and you only get me <clears throat> um, doing the design. So, you know, I think these are really, really important uh, uh, factors to take into consideration when hiring a designer. Yeah. And, and the main thing you said there is you have to click with them too. And right. if, you're, if you're not going to click with them, then what's the point because you're just going to butt heads the whole entire way throughout the whole yeah. entire process which it's a long yeah. process too it's a process and it is it's an expensive one that they're investing money in and you want to be able to click mm-hmm. for sure and i yeah. i say that on the building end too i mean you're we're building you an expensive home and you're spending a lot of money it's a huge investment you should want to click with the builder too and most people that i work with obviously all of them pretty much I, I click with right off the bat and they build with us because they like me they like the company they like the brand they like who, who we are and you're selling yourself too mm-hmm. I mean if they don't like you more than likely they're not going to go with you but if they do because you're the choice or something then it's just not 
it's going to be a bumpy road. So, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I like to do cool stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I definitely <laughs> add some flair. Yeah. Sure. Which is huge. Because like you said, too, I mean, there's a lot of designers that are out there that just kind of go off the book or, you know, see what the latest <laughs> trend is and yeah. and then apply that to the home and just go by that only. And it's just, it turns out boring. And then in two years, it's out of, uh, out of date. Okay. So yeah right so I, I i've been asking this question to everybody i want to get into you a little bit more personally this question it's it's a it's a deep one so what about you per, what about you personally what lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own business or lives that can help us grow honestly um i think this goes for well you know, life is too short. Definitely just take life day by day. And that's number one. You know, you could choose how you could choose to be happy, um, no matter what. So that's just number one. And professionally, and I would say personally, um, you can't make everybody happy. I am a people pleaser, for sure. And, uh, but I think everything can be tough. You know, you could talk through things uh, if somebody is not happy, but I've realized from a very young age, you just can't make everybody mm-hmm. happy. There's no one size fits all. So, you know, that goes with anything, whether it's relationships or, you know, friendships or uh, clients or, or whatever. There's always, you don't know, you don't know what that other person is dealing with. So, um, you know, you might not be able to, you, you just don't know what, what people are dealing with. So mm-hmm. just be nice to everybody. And then, you know, just throw that out there and you know that, you know, you're doing your best. That's it. And it reflects. I kind of like, I kind of like meshed a lot of philosophies together, but that's <laughs> my philosophy. <laughs> no, I love that answer. Cause I'm the same way. I'm a people pleaser, but you, you do learn that you cannot please everybody. There's always mm-hmm. something going on in their lives too, mm-hmm. that you're, you're not Dr. Phil, you're not going to be able to, you know, help them or, and, and just take care of that situation only then yeah. you can't change them either or change their situation. It's mm-hmm. you, you worry about you, but you just be happy, do the best you can to take mm-hmm. care of people. And that's, it mm-hmm. goes in the cycle returns back. Right. As long as you know you gave it your all, you can walk away feeling happy and, you know, that's it. You just wish that person well. Mm -hmm. So, Love that answer. I always get a good answer on that question. (laughs) So that was a really good one. So most, (laughs) most, (laughs) most people, most people ask about your past. I've been asking this question too, because I love to hear you know, what are you, what are your plans for the future? Who will you be? Where will you be? Where do you see yourself? And whether it's 10, 20 years, where do you see your business? Where's, where will we see Rania? (laughs) So, um, I don't know. I, I think I definitely, last year was my best year ever, um, in my business. I was so, uh, thankful for that and blessed. I was just, you know, it was on fire, really cool projects. Um, It was an honor to be a part of all these projects. I just see myself growing and growing um, and hiring, you know, uh, like uh, more, you know, support um, and just being involved with just, you know, really cool, big and uh, projects. Um, I did, I did, it kind of stopped. I had a little bit of a like a weekly show where it was called the Rania and Tanya show. I was with, I, I hooked up with a realtor her, and her name rhymed with mine. I saw that. <laughs> but, yeah. We kind of gave it a break because of the COVID thing that was happening, but we'll probably do that more. I would love to just, you know, talk. I would love to just travel and talk about um, architecture and cool designs everywhere. I mean, who knows where that, that could take, you know, somebody that could be really cool um, to grow that and just travel more. Um, my kids are young now, but when they go, when they all go to school, like full time, you know, definitely working on bigger projects and working more and just growing my business. So, yeah, um, you, should, you should definitely bring back the Rania and Tanya show too. <laughs> I mean, especially during this time, everybody's on the internet now too. So it'd be a great time. 
we got to do it. I know. We just laughed a lot. We talked about current <laughs> current that's, issues. That's what you want. Yeah, it was fun. It was so fun. It was 10 minutes or less. And um, yeah, that, I got to bring that back. I know the people need it. They demand it. The people demand <laughs> it. Yes, yes. And I, and I, in the intro too, I, I saw that you've worked with some high profile people and some celebrities and stuff. Do you want to brush on that? All right, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, a lot of them were in New York, obviously. Mm, they just, you know, were walking down the street. So um, I was part of uh, Jay-Z's design team. I, I, you know, I worked on his home in Tribeca, New York. Also P. Right. Diddy, Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Melania Trump when she was pregnant. Um, uh, and that was a while ago, but she was... Yeah, she was like very statuesque and she was pregnant. She wore this cape. It was very beautiful. Um, and um, a, a lot of, oh, Natalie Morales. She was my favorite celebrity um, that I worked with um, a lot, man. There were a lot of, I had uh, the president of NASDAQ. Um, there were a lot. They, you know, it's fun working with celebrities because obviously budget is not an issue and then it just really all comes down to really cool designs. So, um, yeah, I hope to grow, you know, get back into that and to grow that. There are some celebrities, a lot of sports players down yeah, here, right? Yeah. So, we'll see. Hopefully, be- hopefully you can design Tom Brady's new house too once he moves yeah. in there, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That would be awesome. No, that's that's definitely impressive and definitely impressive story you have and everything too. So like I said, I appreciate you taking your time. But I always like to end on this question because this is what the show is all about. What exactly do people need to look for when hiring an interior designer and why should they choose Design by Rania as their designer of choice? So... um definitely look for some creative qualities in the designer you don't you really don't want somebody who's going to come over there and, uh, really for free because they're you know if they if they value themselves they're not going to just give out free um, advice you wouldn't go to a doctor's office and go for free or any other service and go for free so um you know, um, all the other things that I mentioned with experience and education and clicking and, um, you know, look at seeing if the style matches your style and, um, and, um, it's a journey. It's not always like, boom, here it is. It's really a lot of back and forth and, Mm -hmm. you know, it it is a journey. Uh, it's a team effort. It's a, it's very personal. I'm in the bedroom. I'm in the bathroom. I mean, I'm in your space. So, um, it's important that you know you 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 know you look for these qualities and you'll get them when you hire me because um you know i become friends with all of my clients they never really leave my life they uh i'm always touching base with them i'm just calling to say hi and vice versa and and it it becomes a it becomes a really nice friendship so um yeah I I really care about my clients that we become friends and we hang out and our kids play and all that stuff. So it, you know, with me, you'll get definitely a, a personalized, um, you know, personalized attention. So. Yeah. Which is what you want in any business. You want long-term friendship. You want long-term relationship. That's what business is all about. Most people get a mm-hmm. paycheck and they, I preach on that all the time and I can go deep into that, but uh, you know, yeah. most, a lot of them get a paycheck and then they're, you, you never hear from them again, but that's yeah. where you stand out. For sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Rania, this is, this has been awesome. You have so much good information too. I really appreciate you coming on. Last thing, where can people find and connect with you? Okay. I'm on, um, <clears throat> online. My website is designs by Rania dot com with an s i'm on facebook and that's not with an s i know it's a little confusing but on facebook it's designed by rania and um instagram as well and then i could share the um the youtube channel and um all that stuff with you. yeah which i'll attach a link to that too so people can definitely find that and then also once the rania and tanya show makes its yes. debut again too <laughs> 
<laughs> coming that'll, out of quarantine. Yeah, coming out of quarantine <laughs> hard. That'll be that'll be one one thing to see too. So everybody go check that out. But Rania, I really appreciate you taking your time today and coming on. This was great and it was yeah. a great interview. I appreciate you. And thank you guys for listening. Feel mm-hmm. free as usual. I don't ask for anything to like, subscribe comment on this podcast and i will see you guys on the next episode thank you